My name is Hille van Dieren. I live on this island of Terschelling. I've been born here in this old uh, uh, farmhouse. And uh, when my father bought the house in 1938, it was uh, used as a farm. And he started uh, a fruit uh, company. He was selling apples and pears and so. And after the Second World War, it uh, was a place where uh, people uh, could take a holiday. So it was a, a vacation house until 1968. Then I, I, I bought uh, the house from my parents and I started uh, a canteen for the camping Appelhof as a youth camping, very famous in Holland. We had the first uh, cannabis users here on this island. We didn't know what it was. They were smoking very long cigarettes <laughs> and they smelled like hell. And uh, we started diving here around the island in 1975 and in the first years we discovered a lot of uh, shipwrecks. Some with very uh, interesting cargo like uh, the German ship, the Tassos. It was uh, bound for a, a lot some uh, places around uh, the Mediterranean, Turkey, um, uh, what more, Greece, and so. And uh, the ship sank in 1895. A lot of the cargo was salvaged with the helmet divers, and uh, what was left was found by us in the, in the beginning, 1975, 1976. And in, in uh, 1981, we bought our own ship. And uh, when we had a ship, we found uh, we could lift a lot of things. So uh, after that, uh, I collected things uh, to build up a museum for the the, the diving club. But uh, it didn't. Uh, we didn't do that. So I started in 1992 my own museum because my wife didn't like it to have the house full of items I found on the sea bottom. So that's why we have the museum. You know, the people on this island they were grown up with uh, the sea and, and, and uh, what, was, what, was, what we found on the beach, the wood and, and so on, and different things. And uh, we call it Jutten. And Jutten is uh, when you go to the beach and uh, try to find some people, some things that's uh, free to pick up. It costs nothing. And that's why we started diving, because we found a lot of things in the shipwrecks and it cost nothing and you could take it. And they always ask us, are you allowed to take it with you? And then we say, no, we if you don't ask it, you can do a lot of things. So we don't ask if it's allowed. The last years uh, we have a lot of new laws uh, uh, on the sea bottom, uh, shipwrecks forbidden to dive on it. It's uh, So, but... Uh, we still dive. We still pick up things. Oh, on this island we have no rules. People are on these islands are very special. They, they are not like the same lang people that you find on the mainland. We do all these things. We never ask if it's allowed. So, uh, most of us. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it here on the island. Uh, we have more than 600 four-wheel drives. Just because you are in the winter, you are allowed to drive on the on the beach. We have 28 kilometers of beach and uh, everybody hopes to find something of, of value. And um, nearly every year after a storm we find uh, uh, wood from uh, cargo from ships. And uh, the last uh, 25 years we found uh, uh, the drifted a lot of containers, came, uh, went overboard and we found here a lot of things like uh, 1906. There was a cargo ship, it lost 58 containers. Most of them were full of shoes, left shoes and right shoes, but not bound together. So we had nearly 500,000 shoes on the beach in uh, 60 different types in six sizes. So when you picked up two shoes, it, the, the chance that you had the pair was one to 400. So after that, we had a big change on the island. People were uh, 
drove around and to, 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 to make matches of those shoes. And after that, when they succeeded, we had nearly every one had a shoe, a shoe shop. Very cheap shoes, five euros for a pair. It's, uh, the ships, most of the ships uh, in, in the 1800s and the 1900s came from the Scandinavian uh, countries like Sweden, Norway, uh, Denmark, and then uh, they started uh, sailing from Skagen in the north of Denmark and uh, for uh, bound for Amsterdam. And uh, because a lo lot of uh, always we had northern, most uh, northern winds, uh, bad visibility, and they uh, were not equipped with uh, like today with radar and so. So the wind drove them to the island. And uh, that's why we have, on the, we have the shallow waters around those uh, Frisian islands. They go into, f for miles into the sea. So that's a real shipwreck churchyard. And then in the First and the Second World War, there was a lot of fighting around. And uh, the Germans, especially the Germans, they lost here many of their cargo ships. They, uh, they sailed uh, every week in a convoy from Sweden or Norway with ore, copper ore, iron ore for the war industry. And the British, the, uh, the British came with uh, motor torpedo boats and, uh, and uh, airplanes and they succeeded in sinking a lot of them. Can you describe for some of this? It's cold, colder, visibility is often bad and uh, we had a lot of waves. You know, very de it depends on the weather. It's not uh, if you have 40 days a year for good diving, it's, it's okay. But uh, sometimes we have a bad season with a lot of wind and we, we even don't dive then. Yeah, the Westland, it was, uh, there was a day that uh, the dikes broke in Holland, in the south of Holland, in Zeeland and South Holland. Nearly 4,000 people drowned, but what nobody knew, what uh, the same night and, and the next day, more than 10 different ships sank on the North Sea. But it was not in the papers. And uh, some years ago, uh, we found a shipwreck not so far from here. And uh, we, we knew it was a Dutch wreck because we found some Dutch signs. And it was a typical, typical uh, ship. So one of the guys who uh, he said it is uh, it's built before the war and it has a Dutch motor and so on and so on. And the same uh, year a lady came and uh, she said my father uh, disappeared and on the 30 January 1953 in a big storm. And uh, I told her I think we did we found the wreck of last. Month, a month ago, it was. Uh, but uh, if you have some, uh, if you have some pictures of the ship, maybe we can uh, see it. And then uh, she came with us, uh, the pictures, and she was on the, and as a cape stand, is staying there. And there was a, a picture from her and her uh, mother sitting on the cape stand. Is cape stand a good word? Capstander? Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, on, on the deck? It's You see that the thing uh, next to the cannon? You can yeah. turn uh, a cable. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I have no idea what it's called in English. No, no uh, we say it's Capstander. I, I think it's a Cape Stand. Capstander. It's to... Uh, when the ship uh, moors, you have to put uh, the lines, they, they, with a, a hand wheel, they could turn it and then... Uh, ropes were tightened and there was a picture and uh, it's a very typical form and one of the divers said I know that's lying beside of the wreck so then we knew it was certainly 100 percent the Westland. Huh. Gave her great fun. She was so happy to hear. Now we like it. The more ammunition the better it is. We have a lot of sp specialists uh, who can uh, who, who can uh, uh, put the fuses out 
had burned the, uh, burned the powder and so. We did a lot of things that wasn't allowed in Holland. To pick up, to pick up ammunition is forbidden. But it's a kind of uh, spanning, I don't know. Spannung, wie heißt das? Ex excitement. Yeah, to mean, work with explosives. Yeah, it's ex excitement to work with explosives. So we found a lot of uh, big grenades with uh, the brass uh, uh, hulls. I don't know the word. And then um, well, we put them out. Uh, I, we uh, we salvaged a lot of them, but we want just the brass. Uh, Hills, what is the hills? The shells? The brass shells, yes. So you had to, to take the grenade out of it and the powder back. So <laughs> what can you do with the powder? You wait till the, 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 the we called it Audi Ars Avond, this eve, that's the 31 of December at 12 o'clock. We uh, put them in cannons near the the diving club and we had a lot of firework for free. <laughs> Even after 150 wrecks, when you come on a new wreck, your heart is always beating more than normally because you don't know what you fi will find. So then uh, it's even after so many years when I come for the first time on a new wreck, it's, it's so different. We have a lot of wrecks. I dived more than 100 times. So that's quite different than I know what I will see. But on a new wreck is always excitement. Yeah. We salvage them all with the ship. We can lift 14,000 no, 14, kilos with our salvage ship. The, the ship we bought in 1981 was used for uh, salvage anchors that was lost on the, on the sea by ships who were anchoring, waiting to go to Antwerpen. And uh, the, the man who owned the, the ship, he was drowned, so we bought it from uh, his widow. And uh, we nearly made uh, 2,000 uh, trips with the ship. And always, most of the time, we find sinks. So last week they lifted an old uh, iron uh, screw and propeller and uh, that was uh, I think it's the oldest propeller we have in Holland it uh, ship was built in 1857 and uh, maybe you have you have been there on the on the harbor where uh, the house is of the diving club and there uh, you will see all the items we we always we all the things there we salvaged with the ship the Ursus II, called the Ursus, it means strong beer. Ecuador is the name of a, a famous shipwreck around the island. It's nothing to do with the, the land in South America. But uh, when we were young, we eat uh, we eat uh, corned beef and uh, and uh, butter from the Ecuador, from the cargo. Yeah, most most uh, on the, on the top floor in the museum. That's all uh, salvaged by me, by me, from the different wrecks. And what's here around is uh, a lot found on the beach. Not only by me, but but if somebody finds something or anything, it's for you for your museum. Can you can you use it? And 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 it's hard for me to say no. So <laughs> I have too many things here because it's full now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I started with, uh, uh, is a shelf a good word, a shelf? Yeah. I had a shelf, I put some small pieces of uh, tea cups and so, and coffee cups on it. And then uh, I found a barrel with a friend together. And then we had in one day 650 uh, of those different Turkish tea of uh, coffee cups and when I came home and my wife said oh no another shelf and an and another shelf and another shelf and when my room was full of it she said take it over to the what we call the boerderij the farmhouse and build up your own museum so 
that's her on the picture. I saw it, yeah, yeah. I saw that. Things that drift on the shore, on the beach, it's always an owner. The man who, who has lost it still is the owner. And uh, most that we found here on the beach is uh, like th those shoes. They were owned by the insurance company and they came in and normally they, were, was, uh, they sell them and one third is for the finders, for the salvager, one third is for the owner and one share third is for the Dutch government. And uh, that's from four or five hundred years ago. Always one third for the for the salvager. But the problem is, this, the man who has uh, found it, he will one hundred percent. So he he steals it. He takes it home in the night. And with his shoes, it was no problem. The, the insurance company they came here. The five hundred thousand shoes full of sand and there was a paper in it and they were wet and they said let's let take they can keep it if they want yeah just for the fun it's a, a, most of it is fun the, the the dildo is fun of course i found it and i threw it away because my granddaughter was with me she was six years old and then i had to explain what it was but my wife said take it Take it with you because I know in one hour you will be back to bring it to the museum. <laughs> so I brought it immediately with me. <laughs> oh, I don't know when it's very heavy. It will uh, not wash it on the shore, but sometimes we even find bricks, old bricks, on the end of the island. I can't, I don't understand where they come from. They come from the sea bricks and tiles from the, the roof tiles. Yes. The current is very strong, so they can bring things around. The oldest, there's a brass cannon in front of the museum, 1630, <coughs> maybe. That was uh, one, of <coughs> one of the best finds, was uh, seven brass cannons. Very valuable. But we are not allowed to sell them, so. And why, and why not you're allowed to sell? Because they are uh, owned by the Dutch government. Found in Dutch waters, everything we find in the Dutch waters when uh, when there is no owner, it owns to the state. <coughs> Unusual. Yeah, a big deal though. <laughs> and uh, things that had belonged to the people on board of the ships, that's for me the most interesting things. I have a uniform of uh, the commander of the submarine E-34, and uh, I still uh, think it's one of my best finds. Uh, why? What, 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 what because I know everything about the man and his ship and the way they went down, and then you find his uh, spare uniform because <coughs> they found him on Freeland, dressed in his uniform. <coughs> and I found his uh, a spare uniform in one of the cupboards in the cabin. I like to dive on submarines. Submarines stay intact. If you have an, an, uh, uh, other ships, they break down in 100 years. Only what's left after 100 years is the propeller shaft, the propeller, the bow, maybe the steam engine and the boilers, and the rest has gone flat. But in all the, we found six, seven submarines, and they are all intact, except the front where they exploded a, a torpedo or a mine. Then you can go inside. So the items here the, that are the most things that you salvage, they're mostly from submarines? No, 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 no. Most of, the, here the big, uh, we have a very big collection of the first wreck we found at Tazos, because it had a, uh, because they, they had uh, a lot of boxes filled with everything. Wine, <coughs> cod liver oil, champagne, uh, porcelain, uh, tools. You can't imagine 
everything was on the, in the rack. <coughs> <coughs> I always, when we opened a box of uh, like uh, screwdrivers, I took out some for my own to build up a museum one day. But it, we, uh, first we want to make a museum for the diving club, but uh, we had no house, so uh, then I started for my own. And it's a good business because we normally we were only open in the summer when the camping was open and now we nearly open the whole of the year. The Ecuador. The Ecuador uh, came ashore by mistake uh, and uh, when they salvaged the cargo, what was in the, in the holes, they uh, found a lot of uh, food and coffee beans and so. And it was at that time it was dry. So I was six years old when the ship uh, stranded and uh, my father met with those helmet divers and I asked them for some of those cans of uh, corned beef. And my brothers, they found uh, uh, a, a box of uh, uh, cream butter. And so we had to eat it because it was very poor at, at, at that time on this island. Not m not many tourists after the war, so. But we liked it to eat uh, corned beef. We di we even didn't know what it was, but it tasted good. I still like it. <laughs> but it was free. They got it from the divers. They were in in a, in a most in a box or in a a barn, and after some year they were filled up with sand. And uh, after all those storms, they they never. And then we came and uh, we, uh, uh, we suck out the sand with an airlift, so with air, and then, you, and then we, fell, we took all those cups out, out, one after another, until we had 650. And coffee pots and teapots and egg cups and uh, plates. This pirate ship is built by us, my son and me, completely made of uh, wood from the beach. Old shipwreck parts, you see, like this. This is from the gold ship, the Lutine, okay. 1799. It's uh, oak, and you think it's, uh, but it's very hard, it's still very intact. And okay. that's, that's the oldest piece we have. The tree was uh, cut down in near 1700. They had a, they measured the, the rings of the wood and then they had a paper that it was so old. Uh, I, I was, in my young years I was sailor. I was always interested in the sea. We left here but I was always on my grandmother. She lived uh, near the harbor and this. I was always uh, like to see the ships. And after, uh, after I stopped sailing around the world, I started diving because it has everything to do with shipwrecks. I don't dive for fish. When we were in uh, Truk Lagoon, we were there for one week. I loved it. But the guy who, uh, they went to Palau for a week to see uh, sharks and uh, turtles. And I, I don't like it. To see it for one time, I like it. But it's still the, the connection with uh, with my marine life, uh, my sailor's life. I found on the bottom of the sea. This museum is unique for the Netherlands. It's the only shipwreck museum we have. We have on the Texel Island. They have a museum with uh, uh, things from the beach, but nothing found by divers. And a few shipwreck museums on the world, maybe six or seven and the most of them I visit of course I went to Florida to Key West to see Mel Fisher's uh, he found for 200,000 200 million of gold and silver in the Atosha and I want to see it and uh, I like to see it but I know that we will never find such a, such a treasure and I hope we will never find things that are very valuable because it will be the end of the diving club. Can you, you 
Uh, no, there no. was there were pieces of uh, pieces of uh, rubber, and uh, <laughs> uh, the, what's the Jupiter mystery? There was a website after sometimes. Where they, did they come from? I knew the name of the ship, but I am not allowed to tell it because there's a service company on this island who sells the cargo of a Japanese ship, and in the Japanese ship is copper, brass, tin for millions. And between that were those uh, Tupperware plates like this. And they first were drifted to Cornwall, and then to the island of Wight, and then to the, the, the island in the, in the, ch in the canal, the channel, like uh, Jersey, Guernsey. They were found in the north of Spain, <laughs> in France, <coughs> along the Dutch coast, even in Denmark <coughs> and Sweden. <coughs> and it was, she stopped it, it's not more on the web. <laughs> the Jupiter mystery was a map where all new ones were found. Huh. But I knew uh, where they came from. I told her, there was a lady in England, but I told her I'm not allowed to uh, tell the name of the ship. <coughs> It was an illegal salvage, of course. <laughs>